Though Saul came to be king primarily due to his outstanding appearance, he never won the inner battle. On the outside, he was tall, attractive, and well-built. 1 Samuel 9-2 Kish had a son named Saul, as handsome a young man as could be found anywhere in Israel, and he was a head taller than anyone else. On the inside, however, he was nothing more than a shrimp. Observe Saul's leadership. When the time comes for Saul to be appointed king, he hides among the baggage. 1 Samuel 10, 21 and 22. Then he brought forward the tribe of Benjamin, clan by clan, and Matri's clan was taken. Finally, Saul, son of Kish, was taken. But when they looked for him, he was not to be found. So they inquired further of the Lord, Has the man come here yet? And the Lord said, Yes, he has hidden himself among the supplies. When Saul's army scatters, he panics and disobeys his divine orders. When confronted with his sin, Saul justifies himself. 1 Samuel 13, 10-12 As soon as he had finished offering the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came. And Saul went out to meet him and greet him. Samuel said, What have you done? And Saul said, When I saw that the people were scattering from me, and that you did not come within the days appointed, and that the Philistines had mustered at Michmash, I said, Now the Philistines will come down against me at Gilgal, and I have not sought the favor of the Lord. So I forced myself and offered the burnt. Saul is afraid to trust God and destroy the Amalekites when he attacks them. Samuel told Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint you king over his people Israel. Now listen and heed the words of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I have considered and will punish what Amalek did to Israel, how he set himself against him in the way when Israel came out of Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all they have. Do not spare them, but kill both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. So Saul assembled the men and numbered them at Telaim, two hundred thousand men on foot and ten thousand men of Judah. And Saul came to the city of Amalek and laid wait in the valley. Saul warned the Kenites, Go, depart, get down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For you showed kindness to all the Israelites when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites. Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilah as far as Shur, which is east of Egypt. And he took Agag, king of the Amalekites, alive, though he utterly destroyed all the rest of the people with the sword. Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep, oxen, fatlings, lambs, and all that was good, and would not utterly destroy them, but all that was undesirable or worthless they destroyed utterly. Then the word of the Lord came to Samuel, saying, I regret making Saul king, for he has turned back from following me and has not performed my commands. And Samuel was grieved and angry with Saul, and he cried to the Lord all night. When the Philistines confront Israel, Saul's fear prevents him from negotiating, and when David rises to prominence, Saul's insecurity drives him to murder. 1 Samuel 18, 5-11 Whatever mission Saul sent him on, David was so successful that Saul gave him a high rank in the army. This pleased all the troops, and Saul's officers as well. When the men were returning home after David had killed the Philistine, the women came out from all the towns of Israel to meet King Saul with singing and dancing, with joyful songs and with timbrels and lyres. As they danced, they sang, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his tens of thousands. Saul was very angry. This refrain displeased him greatly. They have credited David with tens of thousands, he thought, but me with only thousands. What more can he get but the kingdom? And from that time on, Saul kept a close eye on David. The next day, an evil spirit from God came forcefully on Saul. He was prophesying in his house while David was playing the lyre, as he usually did. Saul had a spear in his hand, and he hurled it, saying to himself, I'll pin David to the wall. But David eluded him twice. Lessons from Saul Both bravery and cowardice are contagious. When Saul's men were challenged by Goliath, they fled to their tents. When David's men faced vastly superior forces, they stood their ground, fought, and won. 2 Samuel 23, 8-12 these are the names of David's mighty warriors, 
Josheb Bashabeth, a Tachemonite, was chief of the three. He raised his spear against 800 men, whom he killed in one encounter. Next to him was Eleazar, son of Dodei, the Ahohite. As one of the three mighty warriors, he was with David when they taunted the Philistines gathered at Pas Damim for battle. Then the Israelites retreated, but Eleazar stood his ground and struck down the Philistines till his hand grew tired and froze to the sword. The Lord brought about a great victory that day. The troops returned to Eleazar, but only to strip the dead. Next to him was Shammah, son of Agi, the Hararite. When the Philistines banded together at a place where there was a field full of lentils, Israel's troops fled from them. But Shammah stood his ground in the middle of the field. He defended it and struck the Philistines down, and the Lord brought about a great victory. It, it doesn't matter how good your intentions are if you lack courage. When he presented burnt offerings, Saul had good intentions, but he allowed his actions to be dictated by his fear that the people would abandon him. 1 Samuel 13, 13 and 14. You have done a foolish thing, Samuel said. You have not kept the command the Lord your God gave you. If you had, he would have established your kingdom over Israel for all time. But now, your kingdom will not endure. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart and appointed him ruler of his people, because you have not kept the Lord's command. Only courage enables you to do what you are afraid to do. Saul's lack of courage was evident from the start when he hid among the baggage to avoid becoming king. 1 Samuel 10.22 So they inquired further of the Lord, Has the man come here yet? And the Lord said, Yes, he has hidden himself among the supplies. We are slaves to our own insecurity and possessiveness if we lack courage. When confronted about his repeated attempts to kill David, King Saul briefly repented on several occasions. But, trapped by his fears and insecurities, he always returned to his evil pursuit. People will lack commitment if the leader lacks courage. Contrary to God's command, Saul and the people spared the best of the Amalekite livestock they captured. Saul let it happen because, as he admitted, I feared the people and obeyed their voice. 1 Samuel 15:24. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. I violated the Lord's command and your instructions. I was afraid of the men, and so I gave in to them. A leader who lacks courage will never abandon the familiar. In direct violation of God's law, Saul used a medium to seek advice from Samuel's departed spirit. 1 Samuel 28, 5 through 20. When Saul saw the Philistine army, he was afraid. Terror filled his heart. He inquired of the Lord, but the Lord did not answer him by dreams or Urim or prophets. Saul then said to his attendants, Find me a woman who is a medium, so I may go and inquire of her. There is one in Endor, they said. So Saul disguised himself, putting on other clothes, and at night he and two men went to the woman. Consult a spirit for me, he said, and bring up for me the one I name. But the woman said to him, Surely you know what Saul has done. He has cut off the mediums and spiritists from the land. Why have you set a trap for my life to bring about my death? Saul swore to her by the Lord, As surely as the Lord lives, you will not be punished for this. Then the woman asked, Whom shall I bring up for you? Bring up Samuel, he said. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out at the top of her voice and said to Saul, Why have you deceived me? You are Saul. The king said to her, Don't be afraid. What do you see? The woman said, I see a ghostly figure coming up out of the earth. What does he look like? He asked. An old man wearing a robe is coming up, she said. Then Saul knew it was Samuel, and he bowed down and prostrated himself with his face to the ground. Samuel said to Saul, Why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? I am in great distress, Saul said. The Philistines are fighting against me, and God has departed from me. He no longer answers me, either by prophets or by dreams. So I have called on you to tell me what to do. Samuel said, Why do you consult me now that the Lord has departed from you and become your enemy? The Lord has done what he predicted through me. The Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hands and given it to one of your neighbors, to David. Because you did not obey the Lord or carry out his fierce wrath against the Amalekites, the Lord has done this to you today. 
The Lord will deliver both Israel and you into the hands of the Philistines, and tomorrow you and your sons will be with me. The Lord will also give the army of Israel into the hands of the Philistines. Immediately Saul fell full length on the ground, filled with fear because of Samuel's words. His strength was gone, for he had eaten nothing all that day and all that night. He lacked the confidence to let God guide him into an unknown future. A lack of courage will eventually bring down a leader. Saul's lack of bravery ultimately cost him not only the throne of Israel, but also his own life and the life of his devoted son, Jonathan. 1 Samuel 31, 1-6 now the Philistines fought against Israel. The Israelites fled before them, and many fell dead on Mount Gilboa. The Philistines were in hot pursuit of Saul and his sons, and they killed his sons Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malkishua. The fighting grew fierce around Saul, and when the archers overtook him, they wounded him critically. Saul said to his armor-bearer, Draw your sword and run me through, or these uncircumcised fellows will come and run me through and abuse me. But his armor-bearer was terrified and would not do it, so Saul took his own sword and fell on it. When the armor-bearer saw that Saul was dead, he too fell on his sword and died with him. So Saul and his three sons and his armor-bearer and all his men died together that same day.